You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rosnack. An idyllic riverside setting will play host to a late summer night's dream. The Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg and Flipside Opera and Art Song Collective are joining voices to present beloved Winnipeg musicians, soprano Christina Thanish-Smith and pianist Lisa Rumble in an intimate house concert. To tell us more, I'm joined by both Christina and Lisa in the Classic 107 studio. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Christina, uh, great to have you back. Lisa, so wonderful to see you. Just a week after <laughs> you were last in the studio, you're Can't becoming a regular. <laughs> I know, you're going to co-host this morning show sooner rather than later, I think. Um, Christina, let's begin by catching up a little bit. You were last in studio as a McClellan finalist back yeah. in the spring, ahead of your fantastic performance with the Winnipeg Symphony Orchestra. It really was outstanding. Thank you. So let's pick up where you left off. Yeah. H- how's, how's the summer been? The summer's been... Um, busy and uh, flying by. It's really weird to think that we're towards the end of August already. Um, Yeah, so McClellan happened. It was wonderful. Love being back with the Women's Musical Club always and with the WSO. It was great to perform with Maestro Pelicano before he made his move to Toronto. So um, since then, uh, I did two residencies this summer. So I was an artist in residence with Barat Opera, the Barat Music Festival in Hamilton. And then quite literally from one day to the next, went from Hamilton to Toronto, and I was an artist in residence at Toronto Summer Music Festival. So that took me through July, and I've just been um, working away, prepping for the next season with Calgary, and just trying to soak up some sun. Yeah, aren't we all? uh, I mean, soak up some sun. We're not all going to Calgary as McPhee fellows uh, like you are and (laughs) returning back there, which is very exciting indeed. And I I know you returned to Toronto Summer Music. You've been there before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, with the title of of this recital that the two of you will be giving, uh, A Late Summer Night's Dream, I'm curious about summer specifically, because at, at least to me, there's something inherently different about performing as an artist in the summer months. And I'm, I'm wondering if you could maybe articulate what that is, if, if you feel the same way. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of like school in the sense that you have your school year of September to April. Well, for university and for opera, it's usually like September to spring, or if you're in grade school, then June. But it's very much a more structured routine kind of life through those months. And then you get to summer and um, a lot of young artists will do residencies in the summer of multiple sources, but it almost feels a bit like, like a, I don't want to say summer camp, but it has that laid back vibe. Like you're still learning, you're still performing, you're making connections, but it's also just, there's something really fun and yeah, like almost summer camp E about it. And um, I really love it. It feels a little bit more laid back, although the schedule is usually not. Usually the schedule is more frantic and busy than when we're in standard young artist residencies. But uh, yeah, there's something just really fun about doing summer residency programs. Uh, summer camp for performing artists seems like yeah. a good way to bill it. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, speaking of summer camp, it, it feels like you get to explore more freely, right? Totally. There aren't those rigors there of the sort yeah. of academic year. Yeah. Um, Lisa, let me bring you into the conversation because you know a thing or two about performing in the summer. We were just talking about playing bocce in the summer and singing at the same time. Um, you've been no stranger to summer programs, uh, much like Christina. I mean, I'm thinking about the Schubert Institute, but also Opera Nuova mm-hmm. and VZ, the Vancouver Institute, uh, Summer uh, uh, Song Institute. Um, can you talk more about the idea behind this concert, um, partnering with Flipside uh, and Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg and a late summer night stream? Sure. Um, so basically, I've known Christina for nine years already because <laughs> she came into my studio as a little first year undergrad when I was working at U of M. And, um, you know, obviously has gone a long ways since then. Um, and I saw her this spring very briefly and she said, you know, if you ever want to do a concert, I would totally do a concert with you. And I was like, okay, I'm holding you to that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so here we are, I guess. Um, yeah, and uh, I think the reason that it's um, Flipside and Women's Musical Club is a good pairing for this one um, is that Christina has been with both companies a lot. Um, and the the Women's Musical Club and Flipside are partnering together to do a concert this winter. Um, so this concert now is sort of a, a preparation slash benefit donor event sort of fundraiser for that uh, concert, which will feature our beloved Tracy Dahl and me, which <laughs> is a little scary. <laughs> um, but anyway, I have lots of months to prepare for that um, <laughs> mentally. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, and the Women's Musical Club, as you know, has been around for 130 years. They are the masters of hospitality. And yes. um, as a younger, much younger organization, Flipside, uh, also women-led, women-founded and run 
and also volunteer run like the Women's Musical Club. Um, we just thought it was a really nice marriage for us um, to work together, to learn from them, and to um, yeah, to get to share a great musician together. Yeah, um, yeah well said. Uh, I, I, you know, sort of pairing opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of how long you've been involved yeah. in the Winnipeg music and arts scene, but two incredible organizations. And in terms of that, I was going to ask about, you know, when you first performed together and if it was through U of M, which it was back Indeed. in 2015, I guess, if I'm doing the math correctly, yeah. uh, nine years ago. Oof. What's it been like kind of following Christina in, in her career as you've kind of continued to check in and, and work together over the years? Oh, it's so nice because I, I worked with a lot of students over my years at U of M, and, like a lot. And, <laughs> and I mean, you were one of them. I was one of them. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're part of this yeah. now. I know. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> so um, it's so cool, like watching where everyone goes. And it's sort of rare-ish for someone to go Christina's way where you actually do the thing and go all the way to all the young artist programs. And she's on Calgary Opera main stage this fall. Like... That's a pretty big deal, and it's really exciting that. And she she came in. I'm sorry, I sound like such an old woman now, but <laughs> no, like it's, she it's came okay. in as such a eager and like devoted performer, and has always been like so committed to improving and and like learning from everybody. And um, so it's exciting to work with her now as as colleagues and to um, like inspire each other and to hear all the things that she's learned over her years. Yeah. So Christina, as someone who's doing the thing, as Lisa just so beautifully put it, <laughs> that was uh, really, really but, nice. No, really. Like, I mean, you, you're, you're following this professional track and you're, you're back at Calgary as we were just talking about, you're doing summer yeah. academies all over and festivals. What's it like working with, with Lisa, uh, with her at, at the keyboard? I mean, that's, that's gotta be pretty special. It's so nice. I think, um, we, or at least I find it's really easy to take it for granted when you're in these residencies because you're working with so many different people and it's great and you're meeting people and you're getting to collaborate but especially in song it's so it's such an intimate art form and so to have like I was we were joking yesterday when we were rehearsing like Lisa knows what I'm going to do before I do it <laughs> more than I do sometimes <laughs> and it's just really nice to have it's like walking into like like a home as opposed to like an Airbnb or a hotel room. Like you just have that <laughs> sense of familiarity that, yeah, that was the analogy I just used, That's I realized. Nice. I like um, but yeah, so it's really nice to come back and perform with her and some of the rep we've done together before, which is nice, but some of it is brand new. Most it, yeah. Uh, yeah, most of it is brand new. And so it also presents like a very welcome and safe challenge for us to do new rep and just, yeah, it's really nice. So I'm really happy to be back and that we get to actually do a full recital together. My, I don't think we've done like a full one since probably like third year undergrad because my fourth year one got canceled because of COVID. So it's been a while since we actually like took the stage and did a full program together. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so excited the two of you have paired up and are going to be sharing uh, your incredible talents with the Winnipeg audience. Um, the big question what are you going to be performing? You mentioned new <laughs> rep. You're kind of running the gamut from what I've seen. Tell us yeah. about what you'll be performing. Um, so because woman-led uh, companies and woman-led recital, we're <laughs> going to open with some Amy Beach nice. because that's what we love. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to do the three Browning songs, mm. and then we'll head into a Hugo Wolf set because the concert that is going to happen in January with Flipside and Women's Musical Club is the Wolf Italienisches Liederbuch. So to give a little bit of a tasting palette to that, we'll do some from Italianicious. We're also going to do a few of his Merica Lieder that I really love. Um, and then we're going to head into a bit of the orchestral world with some, or not some, all of uh, Samuel Barber's Knoxville, Summer of 1915. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, that's actually really nice to perform that piece back home in Winnipeg because it has this very colloquial like sense of home um, and obviously we are not in Tennessee, but uh, my version of Knoxville is Winnipeg so and Manitoba. So it's really nice to perform that in the summer because it is it really suits actually, I think, where we are right now perfectly. And then after Knoxville, we are going to do the uh, Operadores Volume 1 of his classical Spanish pieces, um, which I'm really excited about because I have never performed in Spanish before. This is so wild to me. I, it I, we is were, wild. We were, we, were talking, we were talking off air. What's it like for you singing in Spanish? Really fun, actually, because I think um, in school we do so much like, like very precise diction work in German, French, Italian, even English, how to 
pronounce and sing these languages as authentically as possible. Um, I didn't have that same experience with Spanish music. I just didn't have courses in school for Spanish diction. They exist, I just didn't have them. And um, so it's really cool to kind of figure out, discover this new like language and its beautiful repertoire. Um, big shout out to Karen Santos, another Winnipeg soprano. I was at her house for um, multiple hours yesterday <laughs> going through texts and just catching up. And um, uh, Karen really helped and just helped me kind of get like the flavor of the language too. Because um, I wouldn't say it's super difficult per se in terms of vowels and technically, but there is this like nuance about it that I think if you can uh, speak to someone who is a native Spanish speaker, it's really special to have that. So, and it's been fun. It's fun music and just, yeah, it's a little bit of a summer flavor just to keep the room hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, what a what a night it's going to be. That's coming up this Sunday, August 25th. The location is to be disclosed or maybe discovered, perhaps, <laughs> uh, after purchasing tickets. This is through the Win Women's Musical Club of Winnipeg in partnership with Flipside Opera, wmcwpg.ca. Uh, Lisa, one last word to you. A house concert, they're, they're just special, aren't they? Yeah, they're like the best thing. I used to do house concerts in my tiny hometown in Saskatchewan, and all these like farmers and people who love skidooing and whatever would just be like so all about this classical music and I yeah I love it it's such an opportunity to connect with people on a very real level and I mean that's what flip side is really all about is just like you don't have to be scared of classical musicians or <laughs> classical music because um, it's all just so relatable and it's real for your life too and yeah so I love it. Uh, so why not join them? Uh, beautiful sounds at a lovely riverside setting in South Winnipeg. Uh, music, camaraderie, a little bit of wine and refreshments. Uh, WMC and Flipside Opera admission is by donation with limited seating. Again, WMCWPG.ca, the place to go to RSVP. Uh, Christina, uh, Lisa, you're going to be performing a, a little number. What, what are we going to hear? So we're actually going to do one of the Spanish pieces, um, nice. just to continue with that. So this is the second last piece in the set, um, Del Cabello Más Sutil. Um, it's uh, the text and the song itself is quite well known when I was living in Montreal actually my neighbors across the hall were from Colombia and I was just starting to like look at this set and I knock on the door and I said Miriam like do you know this piece Del Cabello Más Sutil and she was Del Cabello Más Sutil yeah and so it's just um, thought it would be a nice one to do this morning um, it's a little bit slower and a little bit calmer just for this dreary Winnipeg morning speaking of summer and sun that I do not see right now <laughs> um, so yeah well, excited for you to take it away live in the Classic 107 studio this is soprano Christina Thanner-Smith with Lisa Rumpel at the keyboard
Classic 107 Studio. We just heard Christina Vanish Smith and Lisa Rumpel together performing a little bit of music of Fernando Obradores. You can hear that and so much more at a late summer night stream. That's this Sunday, uh, 7 p.m. Admission by donation with location to re be revealed after RSVPing. WMCWPG.ca for more details.